Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about the seven spirits of God. The seven spirits that are before God's throne. And we're going to start by looking at Revelation 1-4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. So we have to understand the seven spirits of God. And a lot of people, you know, just when it, when they get into the deeper things of God, they just, you know, they just kind of back off, you know, because they they don't want to go into a deeper level of the things of God. But we can't have that kind of mindset. We need to have that thirst and hunger to grow deeper and not just scratch the surface. See, don't just scratch the surface of the things of God. No, as a member of the body of Christ, the mysteries of God are not hidden from you. No, they're hidden for you as a member of the body. But you have to dig into the word and you have to, you know, let the Holy Spirit reveal these things to you. And there are these seven aspects of the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits that are before God's throne. And we see them also in Revelation 4, 5. It says, and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire, which were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Then in uh, 5 verse 6 says, And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So we're going to look today at these uh, seven spirits of God. And we had to understand that these are all facets of the Holy Spirit and all seven of these uh, uh, facets of the Holy Spirit, these aspects of the Holy Spirit all work together. They work together in harmony. And we as believers can work together with the Holy Spirit in a more effective way when we know what these seven spirits are and we let them, you know, be able to operate in our lives. And we see um, uh, what these uh, seven spirits are in Isaiah chapter 11, 11, 1 and 2. So we're going to read that right now. Isaiah 11, uh, 1 and 2. So there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So there are the seven spirits of God. The spirit of the Lord spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And like I said, all these are all aspects of the Holy Spirit. They all work together in harmony. They work together in unison. And we as believers, when we, you know, open up our eyes and ears of understanding, we also can work together and flow, you know, with the Holy Spirit, with these seven um, aspects of who he is. And see, like I said, there's a lot of people who haven't scratched the surface. They're, you know, they just think, well, you know, I've, you know, got my free ticket to heaven. I said my sinner's prayer, or I just believe there is a God, and that's all I want. And so they never go to that next journey, that next level in their walk with God. They're content. Well, don't be content just to stay, you know, just barely getting saved and and having a free ticket to heaven. No, you need to grow. And and there's a lot of people, like I said, with the, that don't really even understand that they're about these spirits. They don't even know they're in the Bible. Because, like I said, you know, a lot of people won't teach about them. Or there's been, or if people even do teach about them, it's, it's very limited. And, and, and there's no, you know, full depth of what these things are. And so we have to understand that. If you want to grow, you know, in the knowledge of the truth, well, guess what? You need the, the, the wisdom of God. You need understanding. You need, you know, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is not a... a, a the other type of fear. There's two types of fear. There's the spirit of fear, which is from the devil. That's a, a you know, a, a, a chronic fear. That's, you know, a, a being afraid and stuff. No, the, the, that kind of fear doesn't come from God. The fear of the Lord, that's the other type of fear. It's a reverence. It's a respect for God, a clean type of fear, because you know who God is. It's a reverence for him. And that's one of the aspects of the Holy Spirit. When you're truly coming into agreement with the Holy Spirit and you're allowing him to you know, teach you because he's the spirit of truth. Guess what? Then you're going to have that true reverence for God. But we also see the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge, and they all work together. And as we've looked in other teachings, knowledge 
you know, is the fuel of faith. When you have the knowledge of the Word of God and you apply it. See, there's, there's the thing. A lot of people, they don't have any the knowledge of God. Or as Hosea 4, 6 says, they are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Not just because they haven't heard it. A lot of people have heard it, but they reject it. Like I said, they don't want to go deeper. And they don't want to understand um, the seven spirits of God. They don't want to understand anything in God's Word. And that's why a lot of them are just in, in total ignorance. Or they're just, they, they don't, when you show them, you know, uh, what scriptures say about any particular subject. You no, know, they just don't, you know, they don't want to hear. They don't have time. Or they say, I just don't understand that. That just, it, it just doesn't mean anything to me. Because they haven't tapped into, you know, the spirit of understanding, which is one of the seven spirits of God. They don't have the understanding of the word of God. See, understanding makes sense of what the Bible really says. When you have understanding, there's like a light bulb going off. It's that rain of knowledge coming forth. It's like, okay, now I know what it's saying. Now I understand. Then you can apply it. But if you don't have understanding, if you don't have God's wisdom and his counsel and his might and all the rest of them abiding in you, if, you, if you're not open to receiving what God is trying to say to you through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit. See, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, now you, you are in that place of an opportunity to be able to grow in the deeper things of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you, but you have to have your eyes and ears open. You have to... So you have free will. God's not just going to um, force his wisdom, his counsel, his understanding, and all these other things upon you. You have to be open to him. You have to put yourself into position to want to grow, to want to be connected to the full counsel of God's word. And we really need to understand this. In um, uh, Proverbs, in Proverbs uh, chapter 2, and we're going to look at a lot of Proverbs because we see a lot of uh, the aspects of the Holy Spirit in this book of Proverbs. And we're going to start by looking at uh, chapter 2. Uh, 1 through 12 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice equity and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you, understanding will keep you, to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, and from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. See, a lot of times, you know, there's people who are just walking in all kinds of um, uh, just garbage. They're walking in darkness, the occult, the new age, you know, addiction, sins and stuff. Why? Because they don't have a knowledge of God's truth. They don't have an understanding about how to be able to be free from the clutches of the enemy. How to be able to overcome all those things that the devil puts in their path. See, they don't understand their authority as a believer. They don't understand, you know, the weapons of warfare. How, how to use the blood as a primary weapon. How to use the name of Jesus as a weapon. Why? Because... They've never either, they don't, haven't been taught it, or they've been taught it incorrectly, or they just, like I said, they just, they're content where they at, or they don't have any understanding. Why? Because they're not allowing these uh, seven aspects of the Holy Spirit to be able to operate through them, to be able to, you know, clarify things to them. See, we have to have understanding. We have to have God's wisdom, because if you don't, guess what? You will be deceived. You will be in that place where the enemy can just come against you and just, you know, uh, left, right, and center. Just feeding you with false doctrine. Feeding you with all the lies that he spews. And that's all the devil does do is spew lies. And if you don't have a deeper understanding of God's word, then guess what? Then you're going to be putty in the devil's hand. Like I said, these seven spirits work together. They bring the power of God into your situation. You may be dealing with, you know, a lot of things. You know, things that you just feel like, you know, you just, you just can't overcome. Well, you can when you have the knowledge of the word of God. Like I said in a, a previous teaching, knowledge is the fuel of faith. See, we all have been dealt that measure of faith when we were born again. But it's up to each one of us to grow our faith. 
And how you do that? The knowledge of the Word of God. Don't be destroyed for the lack of it. No, pursue the knowledge of God. Start digging into the Word. You no, know, reading it, studying it, meditating in it, and start applying it. See, just having a bunch of knowledge. See, knowledge is power. But knowledge not acted upon is just head knowledge, and it won't do you any good. No, you need to act upon the Word of God. And when you are totally connected to, to the Holy Spirit fully, guess what? Then all these aspects, all these facets of the Holy Spirit, they will work together in your life and to bring you to that place of victory. So we really need to understand this. Yes, it says knowledge is pleasant to yourself. It says the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Think about it. That's how we're going to be able to, you know, get to that next place of victory. It says when, when you really seek, you know, God, God's wisdom, you seek his knowledge, you seek his truth. It says, then that's how you're going to understand the fear of the Lord. That's how you're going to understand what tr the true fear of the Lord is. How not being afraid of him, no, no, but respecting him in awe of him. Why? Because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to move through you. You're allowing the aspects of, of God to be able to flow through you so that you can grow. And not only that, but you can also teach other people. You can show them these things and say, hey, look in Isaiah chapter 11. These are the seven spirits that are before God's throne. And these are you know, the aspects of who he is, and we can also work together with him to be able to walk in these things, to be able to truly have a true fear of God, to be able to walk in the counsel of God, to walk in the power of his might, to be able to be immersed in his wisdom, knowledge, and spiritual understanding. And when you have all those things working together in your life, guess what? Then you're going to be a force to be reckoned with when the enemy tries to come against you, him and his demons. Guess what? They're going to be putty in your hands. Why? Because you're built up in the Word. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you. And you, with the Holy Spirit, are being co-laborers. We're working together with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to, you know, bring God's perfect plan to fruition in your life. To be able to, you know, sweep the devil out of your life, out of the lives of your loved ones. But it's going to come through you having uh, an understanding of the Word, knowledge of the Word, God's wisdom flowing in your life. Think about it. In Proverbs 3, 19 uh, through 23, says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped, the, and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. See, when you're walking in God's wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, guess what? You're not going to um, uh, stumble. You're not going to be on the wrong path. So there are two paths. There's God's pathway, which is the narrow path that leads to life. And then there's that broad way, Satan's way, that leads to destruction. But when you are immersed in the word of God, when you are developed in his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, his counsel, his might, and you have that true fear of the Lord, guess what? You're not going to be hindered. Your steps won't be hindered. You're, you will not stumble. You're on the right path, and God, God will guide you. As it says in Psalm 119, 105, God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light for a path. And it goes on to say in verse 130 of that chapter in Psalms, he says that the word of God gives light, is, is a light. It brings light, revelation. It brings that that. Like I say, the light bulb of the Holy Spirit coming off and into your spirit. Just saying, wow, now I understand. Because that's what the Word does. It gives light and understanding. Uh, it opens up clarity to you. But you're not going to get it just by just, you know, oh, yeah, I have a Bible and just kind of just reading over. No, you need to dig into there. You need to say, Lord, give me understanding. I don't want to just read a scripture. I want to understand it. I want to know what it's really saying so I can apply it to my life, to apply it to my situation. And see, and that is one of the aspects of the Holy Spirit is understanding. And like I said, they work together. Understanding works together with wisdom and knowledge and counsel. Think about it. Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Because, see, just having one is not going to be enough. You need all of them. See, it, wisdom is the principal thing. But when you are in that place of getting and developing God's wisdom in your life, and guess what? Then you need to understand it. You need to understand the wisdom that God has given you so that you can apply it accurately to the situation that you're dealing with. Think about it. 
in uh, chapter 8, Proverbs 8, 6 through 14. It says, listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. From my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and write to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and I have strength. Think about it. So they all work together. God's wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the fear of the Lord, counsel. Manosa says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. See, when you truly understand what the fear of the Lord is and you walk in it, guess what? You're not going to want to be around anything that's evil. You're not going to fellowship with darkness. Why? Because you understand that aspect of the Holy Spirit, the fear of the Lord. And then you're going to hate evil. You're going to hate everything that is contrary to this word. But it's going to come through understanding what each one of these spirits entails. Think about it. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. See, it's all through the word. And we're not even going to get into every scripture, but I'm giving you the headlines so that you can, you know, have a foundation upon which to, you know, be able to work with so that you can understand and develop your faith to be able to grow in the deeper things of God. That way, when things arise in your life, you're going to say, OK, I know how to combat that. So you have to connect all the scriptural dots and keep them connected. See, if, if you have a disconnect, then guess what? You're going to be like I said, you're going to be a. Uh, uh, a stomping ground for the devil because he's he's an equal opportunity destroyer and all he wants to do is just you know get you off the right off the right path onto his path he wants to get you off course he wants to get you with a place where you have no knowledge you have no understanding or if you do have a little bit of knowledge that you just you know give it up you say okay you know what i have the knowledge i have the word but i don't understand it say hope you need to say holy spirit give me understanding dig in there not just read over it mindlessly, but study it. Say, Lord God, show me. Show me the scriptures, you know, because all the, they all mesh together. When you, you know, have that that um, uh, mindset that you want to grow, that you want to be able not to just, okay, uh, hear a sermon or read the Bible and say, okay, I, I've heard that and heard that, but you know what? I don't understand it. Or like a lot of people say about Revelation, oh, nobody understands that book, so we'll just dismiss it. No, no. You can understand the book of Revelation. You can understand the whole Bible. But you're going to have to have ears to hear. You're going to have to be in that place where you allow all these seven facets of the Holy Spirit to be able to work together, you know, in harmony through you as a member of the body of Christ. Think about it. We can work together with the Holy Spirit. We can see God's power be brought onto the scene into our situation if we have ears to hear. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to operate through us, he's the, our inward voice, the inward witness. He's the spirit of truth. And but I see a lot of people don't know how to hear the voice of God. They don't know how to grow in the deeper things of God because, like I said, they don't care about the seven spirits of God. They don't care about the knowledge of the truth. You know, they just don't say, OK, I got saved and, you know, I go to, uh, uh, to church, you know, once or twice a week and I can count on just that the person behind the pulpit is giving me the truth. Well, no, no, you can't always do that. A lot of times there's people behind the pulpit who are giving you false doctrine. Or if there are ones that are giving you the truth, yeah, that's great. But then you need to know that truth for yourself. As it says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But it's the truth that you know, not the truth about somebody else or just somebody else you know, telling you. No, you have to know it. And once you know it, then you need to apply it. Walk in it. Cause and effect. That's what Jesus preached. You want God's results? You do things God's way. You do things your way, guess what? You get your results and they don't work. The definition of insanity, we hear it all the time, is to keep doing the same things you're doing but expect a different result. It ain't going to happen. You want God's results and you do it God's way. But you're going to have to have your eyes and ears open to receive the knowledge of the truth and then to walk in it. And, then, and James it says to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So yes, we hear the word, but after we hear it, we do it. If you just hear it and hear it and hear it and, and get all that head knowledge, it ain't going to be able to properly work in your life. 
You have to apply it. You have to understand it so that you can get to that next level. Think about it. And then in Proverbs uh, 19, 20 through 23, says, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. See, God's counsel will stand. See, a lot of people, there's so many people, you know, even ministers that will say that they're counselors. Or they'll even have a plaque on their door that says counselor. But what they're giving you is not scriptural. A lot of it. I'm not saying all of them, but there's a lot of them out there who are just giving you a lot of um, uh, psychobabble. It's a lot of stuff that has no bearings in scripture. And that's why those things won't stand. But when you find a person who's truly operating in the counsel of God, yes, we need to do, be able to do that. We need to be able to fellowship with true believers of like precious faith. To go to a person who has given you the counsel of God's word, not anything outside, anything outside of the Bible. That's not God's counsel. God's counsel comes from his word. And that's what I do as a counselor and teacher is when I, you know, people call me on the phone or, you know, they contact me through email or in person or whatever. And they're asking Bible biblical questions. You know, they, they, they want to understand things. I'm going to show them what the word says. I'm not going to just give them my opinion. That's not going to do anything. No, we have to give them the counsel of the word. And when you truly are, have an understanding and an, of the knowledge of the truth, you're walking in God's wisdom. Guess what? Then that counsel is going to, um, uh, is going to come forth. Because uh, but like a lot of people don't understand what the word of God says. That's why they, they, they don't need to be trying to give counsel. But there's a lot of them that do. But it says right there, it says that when you listen to counsel, talking about true counsel, God's counsel and receive the instruction. This is that you may be wise in your latter days. It means you're going to grow. It says, but the Lord's counsel that will stand. It means you know that's the only thing that's true. It's the Lord's counsel and those that 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 are operating you know through God's counsel. That means even people who are members of the body of Christ and they're giving you the counsel of God. Not just everybody who says that they're a counselor, but yet they're giving you opinions or they're giving you unscriptural advice. No. Then verse 23 says, the fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it will abide in satisfaction. You will not be visited with evil. And that's a part of God's counsel. When you really have an understanding of what the true meaning of the fear of the Lord is, guess what? Then you're not going to be afraid of God. No, you're going to respect him. You're going to be in awe of him. You're going to be a worshiper of God. See, these all things, like I said, they all flow together. When you have God's wisdom, you have the knowledge of the word, you're acting upon it, applying it in your life. You understand, and then guess what? Then you'll be able to receive true counsel. You'll know the difference between what is false doctrine and what is true doctrine. And then that's going to cause you to really have that respect for God because you know how he operates. You'll know the difference between those people who say that God is the afflictor and he teaches you with sickness and tragedy. You'll know that's a lie. Why? Because you have understanding of the word. You understand that God is a good God. And he already, when Jesus went to the cross, he healed you 2,000 years ago. If there's symptoms in your body, they're legal trespassers. You have to take your authority. See, now you have understanding of your authority as a believer because you are operating in the counsel of God. You're moving in God's wisdom and you're seeing the enemy's lies being defeated right before your face. Think about it. It all comes by working together with the Holy Spirit and understanding every aspect of who he is. Think about it. And then in Proverbs uh, 24, 3 through 6, says, through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of, counsel in a multitude of counselors there is safety. There is safety in a multitude of counselors. Means guess what? When you are surrounded by true biblical counsel, guess what? That's another threat to the enemy's kingdom. But notice it says, through wisdom a house, a house is built, and by understanding it's established, and by knowledge the rooms are filled. Like I said, all of these work together in harmony. Just like when we pray the prayer of agreement, and we come together and we're praying like that harmonized symphony, and there's no out of tune, you know, things going on. Guess what? You're going to see the results in prayer. You're going to see effective prayer, as we've looked at many teachings. When the Bible says, you know, um, uh, that we are to come together, if two or three agree is touching anything, they ask of the Father, it shall be done. For where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's there in the midst. That means people of light, precious faith. They're in agreement, not with only what's being prayed for at the moment, but they're in agreement doctrinally. They're in full agreement with God and his word, and they come to together as true believers. He says, it shall be done. Why? 
because that's God's a man of his word. When you are truly coming into agreement with his word, in agreement with his counsel, guess what? You're going to see the desired results right there. See, it all works together. Like I said, it's, it's supposed to be a harmonized symphony. We're supposed to, you know, flow together in unison with the Holy Spirit. That's how it works. In Psalms 49.3, it says, My mouth, and this should be our prayer, My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. So we need to also give understanding to other people. We need to show them, okay, this is, you know, you know, when they come to people, when they come to you, and they're asking questions about a scripture, you know, that they have struggled to really grasp the meaning of it. Guess what? We need to have we need to have the answers, you know, and that's not just for, for, for those of us who are leaders, but all Christians should be able when somebody comes to you to be able to give them the answer to their question. But a lot of people don't because they don't themselves don't have understanding. Well, we need to come to God and say, God, give me understanding. I'm, you know, he will do it when you come to him. But still, a lot of people, they just sit back. They think it's just going to fall on their head. No, we have to dig in there. We have to do our part. We have free will. And God will reveal these things to you, but you have to come to him and say, you know what, Lord, I need understanding. I'm reading this. I'm reading this. And it's just not clicking. God will reveal those things to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He is the spirit of truth. And he'll lead you only into truth. He won't lead you into error. Only the devil will do that. That's why we need to also have discernment because the enemy will try to come in and, and, and uh, negate everything. He'll try to come in. That's what the devil does for every good thing God has. And God only has good things. The devil always has a counterfeit. That's why we need to use discernment. That one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is, is the discernment of spirits. And we need to also, that's another thing. I have a teaching on that too. So we need to understand that. And then in Psalms 119, 104, it says, Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. It's through your precepts I get understanding. Through God's word we'll get understanding. When we are... You know, people who are developed in the word of God, when we are people who um, uh, live and breathe this word, because this word has to be first place in your life. God and his word are one and the same. But see, a lot of people don't have time for the word. And that's why they never grow an understanding of the scriptures. That's why they're living a defeated life. They don't know how to take authority over the enemy because they don't have a love for the word. No, we have to have a love for the word. It's through your precepts I get understanding. Understanding is not just going to come because, you know, you um, uh, name the name of Jesus you know, decades ago, or just because you sit in the church. No, it's going to come through getting into the Word of God, getting into this Bible. Think about it. And then, of course, 105 says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See, God's Word will light your path, will light your way, but you're going to have to be in that place where your eyes are open, where you're, you're listening, you're seeing, and you're applying it. You can't just say, okay, yeah, I have a Bible. Well, a lot of people have a Bible, but they don't read it, they don't study it, they don't know it. Remember, it's the truth that you know and walk in, continue in, abiding that will make you free. Think about it. In Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. See, that needs to be um, uh, a prayer that we that we are totally, you know, um, uh, really getting to the forefront of our thinking on a daily basis. Because, see, a lot of people, and this is, I, I pray this over people a lot, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened to the word of God. That you know, God will grant them that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So we need that spirit of wisdom and revelation growing on the inside of the daily basis. But like I said, the devil is coming full force with all his ammunition. But thank God we have we have greater ammunition. We have the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God to pull in down strongholds. Think about it. But you're going to be in that place where you are totally immersed in God's word. Say, Lord God, thank you that you grant that you give me that spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I can understand what the word of God says. And then I can apply it. Think about it. And God's power will be will be working in you and through you, not only to get your situation changed, but also to help others, people's other lot people's lives get, you know, where they need to be. Think about it. Ephesians chapter three, nine, nine through twelve 
says, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ Jesus, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice it says, the manifold wisdom of God. That is that multifaceted, many-sided, many-layered wisdom of God. But notice it says that we, or the church, are to make known this manifold wisdom to the principalities and powers. That means they're not to tell us how it's going to be. No, we tell them how it's going to be. We are to make known God's manifold wisdom to Satan's dark kingdom. So this is how it's going to be. But if you don't have any understanding of God's wisdom, of his word, guess what? Then how are you going to make it known to them? No, they're going to sit in your ear and they're going to, you know, build a nest and you ain't going to be able to do anything about it. But when you rise up in God's word and you're uh, immersed in his wisdom, his knowledge, you're going to be able to make that thing known, that stuff known to the devil's kingdom. And that's what's going to tear him down, you know, at every turn. Think about it. And then it goes on to say, we're going to read more in Ephesians 3. Uh, 14 through 21, it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might, there's another one of the aspects of God, might, through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Think about it. God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think or dream. According to the power that works in us, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. But notice it says that we would be able to comprehend was the width, the length, the depth, the height. See, the, and to know the love of God, which passes knowledge. But notice this point, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. All the fullness of God. means That also means all these seven aspects of the, of the seven spirits that are before God's throne. Like I said, wisdom. You know, the fear, you know, fear of the Lord, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, might, and counsel. Think about it. And uh, like a lot of people, like I said, haven't scratched the surface. They're just staying in that same milk of the word. No, we need to grow in the meat. We need to be able to not just have a Bible. We need to understand it. We need to be able to know how to apply it to whatever situation arises in our life. That's how you're going to get to that next level of victory. That's how you're going to be able to defeat the enemy at every, at every turn. Whenever he rises up, you're going to have the ammunition. Why? Because you are growing in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word. You are growing in his might, in his counsel. And you are a threat to God, to the devil's kingdom that way. Not just, you know, you know, saying that you're a Christian, but there's no fruit to it. No, no. And then in uh, Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. His might. See, another, we looked at it just a minute ago, that's another aspect of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of might. And see, a lot of people are trying to you know, go in their own strength. They're trying to do things through the flesh. Well, guess what the flesh is? All it's going to do is going to hinder your walk. That's why we need to overcome the flesh. We need to discipline our flesh by allowing the Holy Spirit to be able to, you know, be, to be right there in center stage. To be able to say, you know what, Holy Spirit, you guide me. Flesh, you line up with the Word of God. So we have to, the Bible says we have to submit to God. When we're truly submitted to God, then we're in position to resist the devil. Then he has no choice to flee. You can't just say, oh, I resist the devil. No, you have to be submit to God. You have to have your flesh in submission to God. And you have to go in his might, God's might, not your own. Like I said, you'll fall flat on your face. But when you go in God's strength, in the power of his might, with the Holy Spirit working in you and through you, guess what? You'll be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Think about it. In Colossians... 1, 9 and 10 says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, <coughs> excuse me, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk, may walk worthy of the Lord, fully in pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. 
That's my prayer for each one of you watching this. That you would walk worthy of the Lord and that you would be increasing in his knowledge. Increasing in the knowledge of God. In Hosea uh, chapter 6, it said that we are to pursue the knowledge of God. Like I said last in the, in the last teaching, knowledge is the fuel of faith. When you have the knowledge of the word, it will fuel your faith. Then you will be able, you want to grow. You want to be able, <coughs> excuse me, you want to be able to grow in all the aspects of the Holy Spirit. Think about it. In Colossians 2, 2 and 3, it says that their hearts may be encouraged, be knit together in love, and attain to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And knowledge. Like I said, the mysteries of God are not hidden from us. They're hidden for us as the members of the body of Christ. We can unlock those mysteries, but we're going to have to put ourselves into position to be in that total alignment to the word of God. Like I said, if you just, you know, say, well, I'm not interested in those things. And guess what? You're not going to grow. You're not going to understand what scriptures say about any situation because it's only going to come through you having ears to hear and putting yourself into position to want to grow, to want to grow in the counsel of God, his counsel, his might, his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, and to have that reverential fear of God. We really need to get this if we want to defeat the enemy, if we want to be able to walk in victory, if we want to be able to, you know, be overcomers. See, we're supposed to be more than conquerors. But a lot of people are not are, are, are just barely conquerors, and some of them haven't conquered anything because they have no love for the Word of God. They don't want to spend time in the Word of God. They don't want to grow in the deeper things of God. Well, no, don't have that mindset. You need to grow. You need to understand, like I said, these seven spirits of God so that you can... You know, be able, like I said, <coughs> to grow in your faith, to be able to operate in a greater depth in your relationship with God. And that should be something that everybody as a Christian would desire. Sadly, it's not, but it should be. And then in Luke 24, 45, look at Jesus, talking about Jesus. It says, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Think about it. They're talking about Jesus. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And that's what I want to, I want to um, uh, impart to you today. I want you to be able to comprehend the scriptures. I want your understanding to be open so that you can grow in all the fullness of God. So that you can be immersed in his wisdom, knowledge, understanding. To be able to apply the counsel of God to your situations. To be able to understand the difference between the uh, reverential fear of God and then the spirit of fear which comes from the enemy. See, all this is going to come when you truly put yourself into position to want to grow in the knowledge of God, to want to be able to grow in the deeper things of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal these things, layer upon layer. See, we can, are to build the Word of God on the inside of us, so that that's all that's there. So whenever we're, we're speaking, guess what? Everything that comes out of our mouth is going to be a faith. Everything that comes out is going to be something that's going to put another dent in the devil's um, uh, deceptive plan for life. It's going to give him a black eye. So I really, really encourage you to get this teaching into the very forefront of your thinking. Really take this to heart, that there are these seven spirits of God that are before his throne. And if you want to be able to walk in the full, you know, understanding of each facet of the Holy Spirit, then you're going to have to put yourself in position. And I'm going to close this by, by telling you again what these seven spirits are from Isaiah 11. So you really get them, you know, planted in your spirit. Like I said, go back and read these, these scriptures, like I said. And ask the Lord to reveal these things to you. Ask him to reveal, you know, the understanding of his word. And he will. But you're going to have to, you know, be determined not to let the enemy, you know, sidetrack you with all his hindrance. So Isaiah 11, chapter 2, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 11, verse 2, again says, The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The seven spirits that are before God's throne. And you can, like I said, be able to walk in all these. You can work together. We are to work together with the Holy Spirit and to see all these fat facets of the Holy Spirit that work together and they'll work together in our lives to be able to bring us to that next level of victory. And like I said, and to defeat the enemy's plan. So really, really get this in the forefront of your thinking. And always remember Isaiah 40 verse 8, the word of God stands forever. Amen.